Georgia's president accuses Russia of violating the newly brokered truce that's supposed to end their days of battling over disputed territory. Russia denies it. CBS News correspondent Richard Roth has the very latest from London this morning. Richard, good morning to you. Good morning, Chris. Well, on paper now, there's a ceasefire pledge and a plan to bring the crisis under control. On the ground, though, there seems to be what one diplomat's called the gap between rhetoric and reality. Moscow denied that Russians had re-entered the battered town of Gori in a column of armored vehicles. Others, including journalists, have encountered the Russians there. Some troops, though perhaps militia and not army regulars, had robbed some foreign reporters. And Georgia's president told CBS News this morning, there's worse. Russian tanks are going through villages inhabited by Georgian population and throwing people out of the houses, putting people into concentration camps that they are setting up in those villages. Um, and to separating men and women. And do you believe that the Russian intention is to eventually re-annex not just South Ossetia and Abkhazia, but Georgia itself? Well, uh, the Russian, Russian intention clearly has been to destroy Georgia. Under the deal worked out by French President Sarkozy in a day of shuttle diplomacy, Georgia and Russia agreed to a ceasefire and to withdrawing troops to positions they held before the fighting broke out. But in effect, it acknowledges Georgia's lost control of two provinces along the Russian border, where Russian troops now are dug in. And Moscow still reserves the right to fire in response to what it calls aggressive actions. Georgia's president may have saved his job and his country's averted a full-scale Russian invasion, but he has no victory to claim from the conflict. Chris? CBS's Richard Rothfors live in London this morning. Richard, thank you.